Welcome to Around the House Northwest, presented by PGE and Oregon Kind of Energy. Hey guys, welcome back for another edition of Around the House Northwest here on Fox 12 Plus. I'm Eric G. Coming up on today's show, we'll stop by the Benchmade Knives Factory in Oregon City. We'll talk fall barbecue trends out of Park Rose Hardware and discuss homeowner and rental insurance with Tony Russell. We'll also check in with Matt Whitback for some tips on high performance home remodeling. We always like to kick the show off with our Perform Like a Pro segment. Doesn't matter if you're a first time DIYer or a licensed contractor, I got some tips for you. Now it's time for Perform Like a Pro, sponsored by The Wall. Hey guys, in today's Perform Like a Pro, I'm gonna replace some base molding. I'm gonna show you the right way to do it without damaging your walls and some tips and tricks that might even save you some money. Let's get after it. All right, so on our base molding here, I've got this 1970s stuff that's just not amazing. So it's gonna go, so we're putting in this new base. Now you gotta be very careful in removing this because the problem is if I come in here and just start prying, I guarantee you I'm gonna start making holes in the wall. So the first thing I do is I get my uh, five in one tool and I go across here and basically just tear up the caulking line because this has been caulked before. And I wanna break that seal right there. Now, if you're careful with these, you can actually use these as a little bit of a template when you go out to your saw to cut the new ones. So my next thing is to have an old putty knife, something you're not too worried about because now I'm gonna come in here and give it a little pry. Once I've done that, then I can come in behind it and start to pop this off carefully. Now this gives me enough surface area here not to break the, the sheetrock up and cause a hole. So just come through here gently and you'll work your way across. Now the next thing is I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a second and mark out where my studs are because I'm gonna wanna grab that. This molding was so small, they just went across the bottom and grabbed the bottom stud. I wanna know where my studs are, so when I fasten it back in here, I know where it's gonna go. So what I do, so I don't mark up the walls, I just take a piece of tape, come across here, grab my stud finder, start out in the middle here, and just mark out where the studs are. We know something's out here, because that's the end of the wall, there's always gonna be a stud out here. So we know we're good here. If I come across here, about every 16 inches, I know that there's a stud. So from there, I'm gonna go out to the saw, cut these new pieces, and I'm gonna show you a trick really here of how to glue it together before we come in and even fit it. It's a good way to make it go easy. All right guys, so what we're gonna do here is I wanted to recreate this so you could kind of get a visual of what we're doing. So I'm gonna use this as our template because it fit perfectly to begin with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut this piece right here with our two miters that's kind of the hardest one. So I wanna make sure and get that exactly the right way. So we're gonna go over to the saw first. I'll get that set up and I'm gonna show you the tricks and tips on how to use the saw correctly to make this easy for you. Let's go cut some wood. All right guys, we have this outside corner piece, which means I've got two miters to deal with. But first let's talk about the molding is what you do before you get to the saw. First off, I wanna make sure that you actually go through and pre-paint these moldings when they're painted like this, get them finished up. It's a lot less work down the road, especially when you've got that up against the floor, with carpets especially, because you won't have to deal with that. So first off, I like to cut these on edge this way. So we've got a nice flat edge, and make sure you set up your saw correctly with a square, and you got that set up. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut this outside corner here on this piece. Now. One little trick that I do is when I come over here and set this to 45, I actually go a little bit farther to about 45 and a half or 46 because I want to overcut that bevel. So that way our outside corner is great. And if it's wide in the back, it doesn't really matter. So let me get that locked in here. All right, our next step here is I'm going to mark the five inches off here. And I like to use my razor knife to mark this because it leaves me a much finer mark. So I know exactly where I'm going to. And there's my five inches. And then I'm gonna cut the straight part to length because that's the easier cut to make when you've got a measurement. Having those pieces like that hanging around are really easy to make sure because you can make sure and remember your orientation like this and go, okay, I need to miter it this way keeps you from getting messed up and have to take down notes. 
Now the secret to great base moldings is pre-gluing, and this is the little trick that you should be doing to do this stuff. This is the 2P10, it's a two-part. So it's like super glue for wood. I put this down, I spray the other piece with the activator, it goes together. I got about two or three seconds to get it right. So you gotta work quickly. It will glue up quickly. If you want to have to move it around, don't stick it together, let it dry, peel it off, do it again. But once it's glued together, it's there. So I'm gonna start out with this piece here. I'm gonna put this on this. And this activator I'm gonna spray behind me. Cause I don't want it on there. Now when these two go together, it's gotta be right. All right, let's get this set in. This glue is super strong, so you can really kind of push on that pretty well. All right, that's where I want it. Now, finished nailer, you wanna make sure you hit those studs and across the bottom as well. All right guys, your last step here is to caulk this in and just a really good painter's caulk. Make sure it's a paintable caulk, so it's gotta be a latex base. Now, if this is a painted wall, grab your tape, run a tape line, so you don't have to repaint this again. For me, I'm gonna be painting this here on another episode, so stay tuned for that. Let's get this caulked in. All right guys, this is a simple DIY project to update your home and make a huge difference to the look I know you can tackle.